My contribution is about conflict diamonds or blood diamonds. Um, and <clears throat> this was and remains an important issue for Africa. Um, 500,000 people died in the war in Angola. It was fueled largely by diamonds. 150,000 people died in the conflicts in Liberia and Sierra Leone, largely fueled by diamonds. Congo, um, <clears throat> over five million people have died as a result of the conflicts. Five million, uh, directly and indirectly, and a lot of that was fueled by resources, mineral resources, uh, including diamonds. But there's another way to look at diamonds. Diamonds are Canada's third largest export, so they're important to us. But they're being exported as well from 16 African countries. They're the biggest export from Congo, biggest export from Sierra Leone, most important export from a number of places. Very important to Namibia, South Africa, Botswana. Botswana is the world's largest producer of diamonds. And in development terms, India. There are a million people cutting and polishing diamonds in India. Polished diamonds are India's biggest export. Even Indians don't know that. And of course we have diamonds in South Africa, uh, diamonds in South America, Australia, Russia, and so on. So this is a global phenomenon and uh, a development issue for all of those countries, including Canada, because most of our diamonds are in the north. <clears throat> so getting conflict diamonds under control, creating the Kimberley process, uh, thinking about the long-term development um, that's required is uh, what I'm writing about. The, there are 1.5 million artisanal diamond diggers in Africa. They earn less than a dollar a day. So um, when you talk about regulating diamonds, that's one thing. But turning, turning to development issues, uh, that's another. And so in my chapter, I, I talk about that as well.